great room. A lot of excitement this morning. Pretty, just great to get here early. Feel all the energy. I needed some of those comments that, uh, thank you, Wes, for that kind introduction. The comments on uh, just being calm is, is the one that I certainly use and over the years. So it certainly speaks to, to uh, what we've gone through. Let's start out by introducing you to my company, the Moats Corporation. We're now over 100 team members strong, and uh, we're recognized internationally in our industry for our thought leadership and innovation and the delivery of high performance, natural, synthetic, and hybrid turf systems and products across the sport field and landscape industries. That's a bunch. It, um, you know, in order for my team to realize that opportunity to have that kind of impact on the marketplace, what truly had to happen is I, as the founder, had to first learn how to discover the joy in unpacking. I didn't know how to do it. And that's the, uh, that's the most meaningful story I felt like I could share with you all this morning is uh, my life journey. If I could, I'd like to take you back on that journey with me. Uh, back 41 years ago, when I was trying to pack everything on my back and didn't even realize that, you know, I'm just, I'm doing it all, making it, trying to make it happen. Let's go back to the start to set the scene for that. Yep, this was our first corporate headquarters. <laughs> As humble as that is, you know, I, I was okay because it's also the house I grew up in until I was seven years old. I grew up in part of, as part of a large family on a small family vegetable farm just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. And the uh, situation was I just graduated from Ohio State, got my degree in agriculture, and used my farm wage earnings to earn that degree, so I came back home, I was broke. And I had made my trips to the bank, you know, shared with them my hopes and dreams, and um, got the first lesson in, in business strategy, you know, hope and dreams don't get funded, you know. So <laughs> I come home, I lament with my dad, you know, I've gone through all this, like I'm getting more humble. And he's like, you know, I've got seven kids to raise behind you. He was always clever. So I don't have funds either to lend you. But, you know, I've got that old house that used to stand down, on, that we were in down side of the farm. It's still standing. If you can make something of that, you know, have at it. So, you know, I get in there and I refurbish the outhouse out back. Um, <laughs> I did a bit of creative chainsaw work. And pretty soon, I had a place to put my truck from school under roof, you know. And I started feeling a little bit better about it. Started feeling like maybe I could make something happen here. You know, I thought I knew everything there was about growing grass. Um, had a ton to learn there. Um, but I had a lot of grit and perseverance. And um, I didn't know any better. So I made up a moat sign, put it on the street, and I'm in the turf business. So let me now take you fast forward 12 years. I am like super proud because I've now got a bigger office warehouse. And more, even more proud of the fact I've got multiple teams running out in the field. Um, and it's go, go, go all the time. I'm 34 years old. You know, I'm working like many of us can relate to, sun up to sun down. In my case, out there actually building the fields. Um, typical model is me leading one team and running back and forth between the others, trying to supervise those, try to do the business development and manage the business in between all that. At the same time, my wife and I had our young family started, and we had our two youngest at home at that point. Um, you know, going through the day on the go all the time, my go-to was fast food restaurants because you could grab it and go. drive throughs were our thing. Just keep the crew in the truck, grab the food, <laughs> let's eat it. I'm getting on down the road to that next project. And going like this, you know, I didn't know any different. I just felt that's what you got to do to build a business. I didn't really realize at the time that it wasn't sustainable. But it, it's not. We all know that it comes a point to where you can only go so far with trying to pack it all yourself and trying to, trying to hold all that. And for me, the way it started playing out was I had increasingly more problems with my stomach. 
And, it's cr you know, through the day, I'd be cramped up. I'm eating late at night. And um, my kids, sadly, often were already in bed by the time I'm home, you know. And so running like this every day, it got to the point where I felt like I was getting an ulcer. And my wife, Jane, you know, was trying to coax me to, we gotta, we got to think about doing something. we got to go in and get it checked out. Ultimately, I resigned to going into the doctor, and um, it was really odd because she was with me on that trip, which was unusual, you know, to have her come along. But there's probably more going on there than what I realize even to this day. Um, but that was a pretty fortuitous trip. This doctor was pretty blunt, old codger, and... Um, he did a good job, though, of looking at my, my situation overall, checked out my family history, and he was like, you know, Joe, I, I'm concerned more about what you're doing. I'm not so concerned about your stomach. I'm concerned about, I see in your family history, the, ma the guys on your side of the family have cardiovascular issues by their mid-50s. And... Um, You've, your blood pressure is up, and checking from past, it's continuing to rise. Your cholesterol is doing the same. You've got you to gotta do something. So I listen to you tell me about what you do. You need to let go of something. And I'm, I wouldn't want to hear any of that. You know, I'm in there. <laughs> Just give me something more than Tums for my stomach. <laughs> and, and I promise you, you know, I'll get out of here, and I'll, I'll figure it out. I'm, I've got it. I'm working it. I'm dead set on building this business. He came back super blunt, and he was like, Joe, you don't change something up. You could well be dead by your mid-50s. So, whew, um, that hit me hard, um, still does. But, you know, we had that drive home um, with the discussion, much more my wife Jane than me. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't accepting it. But she, you know, that... Uh, can't we just think about something, Joe, something we can let go of? And what we settled on in the end was the simplest of things. We, you know, Coke was my go-to through the day at that time. You know, I, I, I'd grab it in the morning, and then through the day, it was kind of that thing that kept my energy up there so high. And on the weekends, we're running the same way. And so we both had to admit we're drinking too much pop. Um, and we said... I relented in the end and said, yeah, I'll give, some, I'll give up Coke, and let's just try it for a month. And uh, Jane committed to doing the same thing. So it started out kind of tough. We both went to water, but we we're held accountable to each other, and, and by gosh, we're going to get there. And You know, a month went by, and it got a little bit better. And, and I have to say, at that point, I started to realize, you know, there was some gain here. Let's keep it going. So... We went for that first year, and um, really awesome, because by that point, it was like I had a new, much better new habit started of doing water. The go-to was water. And we both agreed to let's just keep that going. I'm really thrilled to say that, you know, that's been 30 years ago. I haven't had a soda since that time. So with that positive momentum, um, said, let's go after the real culprit, which was uh, fast food, and started looking at how can I, you know, it's hard being out there on the road all the time to really be mindful. And the way we came to doing it is I decided to, instead of doing fast food, I'm going to pack my lunch. And it immediately started making me more connect to what we grew on the farm and what we raised in the pasture and put that kind of food inside, more whole foods. We also got processed food out of the house and started eating more of the color palette, you know, started just eating more sensibly, started shopping the outside loop of the grocery store before that became a thing, you know, that was talked about is that's where the good stuff is. Um, super fortunate was happening upon understanding that um, I was high energy and somebody else that played a big part in my life introduced me to running at uh, 34, and that played a huge part in helping substitute what I was doing through the day on this up and down cycle with the sugar high, with um, getting that, getting out first thing in the morning before daybreak and watching the daybreak, you know, running, training. 
It's just a great release, a great place to take the mind before getting into the stress of the day. And for me, it gave me that energy throughout the day, which was 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 great. I had to I had to learn the hard way. You know, I could get two three miles in, and I thought I was fit. And I learned then what real fitness is. You know, cardio fitness is is a different thing than what I was doing here. So, but. I kept learning from those misses, kept improving, and ultimately realized that I'm a long-haul kind of person. Marathons were were my thing. And just enjoyed the place that took me to. You know, while all this was going on, I really started becoming more mindful of what is happening in my company and what I'm doing to my team. And, And it's so obvious looking back, but we had vending machines throughout our locations, and they all had pop in them, you know. And so I'm sugaring my team all day the same thing. First thing in the morning, boom, that's what they hit. And then when they're back in, they're grabbing it, going home. And so I took those vending machines out. Um, was certainly met with resistance at first <laughs> because it's like, what are you doing? So they're in denial. They didn't realize it as well. But pretty quickly, there started to become a new acceptance, and, and we, uh, we did water stations instead. We started, uh, we gave everybody soft-sided lunch pails to start packing their own lunches. And we also had things as crazy, I think it was the Shriners support, but we had snack food boxes throughout our location, and they were all boxes of candy and chips, and we're giving those out as well. And so we collectively decided, let's get rid of those and go with more things like fruit bowls and, and more wholesome uh, nuts and snacks in the workplace, such that as you organization continued to grow, today there's, it's um, very impactful to have anybody new come in because they're like, wow, there's such an awareness around health in this organization. So it becomes much more mindful in the eyes of the team. For me personally, I always have to look at making this grounding connection each year. So I decided to gamify this thing of announcing something every year. I started off with ice cream because I just love ice cream. And uh, I was on a New Year's dare and uh, daring each other what you might do. And dare came from another couple that was pretty good at getting the, where they could get me. And said, I, you know, I dare you to give up ice cream for the year. And, By the end of that evening, I had committed not only to ice cream, but all desserts (laughs) for a year. And wake up the next morning, oh my gosh, what did I do this time? But but you know, it's game on at that point. Um, Much of us that lead people, it's it's like once you're challenged, you know, you're gonna you're gonna get there somehow. So I stuck with it for the year. And honestly, as the year went along, I lost much of my sweet tooth. And so that started a habit every year of saying something I'm going to let go of. I did things like white potatoes and pasta and no cereals out of a box. What I found with this pattern was while I could go back to it on occasion, it wasn't like a go-to all the time because I was much mindful of just enjoying it on occasion, you know. Starting in 2009, we had some really tough unpacks to do in all of our businesses. You know, when you think from nine, from 9 to 11, that was really a tough time for all of us in business. Mine was certainly no exception. Um, we're in the sports industry, and so people with discretionary money, they're holding tight to their funds at that time. So I had some real leaning up to do organizationally in order to make it through that period. I also had some really tough unpacks, maybe even more so in my leadership style. Um, As I look at the game side, look back on the game side, I chose some tough ones. I did no beer for a year, and in 10, I did no wine for the year, and then, uh, God forbid, I went with no alcohol in 2011 for the year. (laughs) And that that was, I wasn't a happy camper to be with. But it set me up, I guess, looking back, it's easy to see, oh, that that worked out pretty well, but it just kind of fell into that pattern. On the business side, well, I feel like I was always a decent guy and certainly had a great team of people around me to support what we were doing. You know, it very much was people following my direction and teaching through example, you know, and, and 
So the organization was very much what, what I'd term as a command and control kind of model, pyramidal. Um, so I always had to be close at hand. And I realized for some time I desperately need to change this up. And so with that downturn, I saw a lot of strong young people in the marketplace. And I thought, I'm going to get much more intentional about reaching out and truly hiring up, finding men and women with skill sets you know, I don't have in order to possibly take this company to another place. That was really a powerful thing, to just be intentional about stating that. so hard for us to check the ego to do so. For me, it's looking back what put me on a whole different platform. Because in, they were available and bringing them on enabled us then to start talking much more openly about things like our values, digging deep into what those values are and making sure they speak um, on behalf of everybody in the company and using them in our company to speak. We also, standing here, owe a debt of gratitude to Aileron because I was introduced to the board of advisory process through Aileron. Started the first board in 2010. And that's been a wonderful process of having men and women on our board rotating through each year that can meet with us on a quarterly basis and really challenge us about that that we don't yet see that's in front of us as we continue to grow the organization. Open book management was another thing that I rolled out during that time. You know, we had accounting going on in the back room somewhere behind the curtain. And it's so obvious now again, but you know, pulling that out so everybody could see what was happening has made, brought a lot more participation and understanding by the team on a quarterly basis as to what we were doing. All these moves set us up for hopefully the inevitable cycle comes back up. And it happened, as we know, in 2012, um, money started releasing. And I was just really in a great spot as a company to, to take advantage of that. I had realized some pretty cool things from the mental standpoint on uh, the running, and I thought, i got to take this unpacking thing deeper on the mental level. And I've always got to do things the hard way, I think. But um, I took it in the form of going after trying to do uh, triathlons rather than just running. So I said, you know, I want to take that place I can get to on running and and have it with me through the day and try to more understand you know, that mental spot. Obviously, you've got to really work on physical fitness, and that takes a tremendous amount of time and development, focus, process development. And I certainly had to turn tail and go home, not finishing you know, as I developed um, skills in that way. Started out with small distances and ultimately did the full Ironman in 13 and 14. Um, the biggest thing for me and the reason just sharing that is how much it moved me in understanding a different mental state that you can get into. You know, when you're going at that high energy as we do in our businesses all day, you know, how to get your head into that state of calm. Some of us are smarter and we can do it through things like meditation. <laughs> for me, I'm doing stuff like this to get there <laughs> to learn how. But, um, you know, to, to be able to calm your mind while everything around you starts to go into crazy time is a powerful thing. Be able to really focus in on just those steps immediately in front of you. And, but be able to then visualize how those steps connect the dots to the end goal that you're seeking. Can really take you further than you otherwise would expect. Coming back into my business, that was a powerful force to the growth we were in at that point. To where I was a lot more less time available to meet with uh, the stuff we were doing. So it immediately made me think on a lot higher, more strategic level because I had the leadership that was dealing with the business at hand. Became a lot better listener to my team. And I think in the end, a lot better coach um, to where we were, to helping work, helping support what they were doing and going forward. Also started looking for the little things. We dug a lot deeper into our culture during that period. We built our culture out on three platforms. On the individual level, ensuring that we're doing things to engage the entire, the individuals in the company. 
on the company level developing programs like the Moats University Training Center was established at that time. Um, in the communities, you know, we build a lot of cool fields we get to watch on Saturday and Sunday, but there's a lot of people in society that don't get that chance. Um, and for us, giving back in our urban cores, bringing some of that beauty into their situation, replacing concrete with something more enjoyable is, is a really moving thing for us. 100 Strong is an organization with our partners to, to jump in and collaborate and do together. In 2015, I started this idea of intentional unpacking, both in my business and in my personal life. And on the personal side, I uh, play it out as going out for two to three weeks on an extended backpacking trip or, or bike tour. Uh, Self-sustained, you know, two, three weeks at a time, pretty quickly everybody becomes the same. Um, we're all in the same mission out there, whether we're CEO or happen to be the janitor or happen to be the person just out of the military. You know, everybody becomes very much connected, and we all eat, sleep, and honestly smell the same after a couple <laughs> weeks. Um, it's a powerful thing to see how much everybody has each other's back. I think we forget that we as people, people pack for the fears. And we do that. We do that in our homes. You know, you, we do it in our businesses. We do it in our personal lives. We just pack so much on. There's no better teacher than to winnow all that down to what you can get in your pack, you know, and go out there and really experience what it is to, to really be released from all of that. Coming back off of that, I become more intentional about looking out within our organization and being mindful of do we have each other's back? Are we covering for each other? You know, there aren't any locks out on the trails. Um, everybody is trusting. Do we have that kind of trust in our organization? Are we doing those kind of rituals that keep us so tribal or keep us together and lockstep together? In 2000 and 17, I decided to, um, to drop Facebook for the year. I mentioned that just because it made me very mindful of, of connections, having more meaningful connections with people. Found I reached out more and made more connection to, uh, to getting out around the company and writing more personal notes, you know, giving shout outs to people. During this period, too, we started messaging our desire to be, become 100 years young. And ultimately, we pursued that to becoming a certified evergreen organization to where everybody, it behooves everybody in the group to be challenged with what are you doing to develop the people behind yourself because we all got to be in that mindset. We also rolled out the great game of business. And great game of business is a, is a powerful force compared to what I had in open book management. Um, while I describe them quickly, the open book is more awareness of what is going on in accounting throughout the company. But the great game of business allows everybody to join in a cadence on a weekly basis of owning a line and taking pride in owning that and helping determine what the outcome at the end of the month is going to be on that line that they can affect. And collectively then, the game each month is just everybody understanding how close when the financials come out seven years, seven days, not years, hopefully, um, later, is um, how close did we come to hitting the mark. Getting everybody involved at that level is really a powerful force. So it enabled us to move forward in a whole different strategy set us up so well for 2018 as I rolled out some of what I've owned and intentionally unpacking some of the, or the shares I had by rolling out our first tranche of an employee ownership, employee stock ownership program, an ESOP. You know, that was met because of our, our approach to the market with a tremendous sense of gratitude and pride. Um, a lot of tears, a lot of, lot of shout-outs, and, 
um, tears on my part as well. And it continues to live that way. Everybody feels such a strong part of the organization. I hope I've given you a sense this morning of how powerful this unpacking can be for an individual, for an organization, for those around that kind of atmosphere. It's really gratifying for me to see the sense, how much it's grown, that mentality of, of being we-centric rather than me-centric across our leadership organization. I can honestly tell you, stand here at 64, I'm probably in a better place than I was at 34. Certainly mentally and spiritually, but physically, you know, I like to think I'm back there as well. Unpacking for me has given me the ability to, to let my true vulnerability show. It's allowed me to let, put my emotions out there for everybody and be comfortable with it. You know, in the end, it's a lot, helped me figure out how to be a lot more generous person. With that, I challenge each of you, find your joy in unpacking. Thank you.